Hi there. So I haven't made a video in a while, but I figured now's a pretty good time to do it since I've had some pretty cool success with Rover lately. So the other day I sort of redesigned the beak mechanism again, hoping that this one will be um, more sturdy, that it will work reliably, and that it will be compliant as well. So that, you know, if uh, kids like try to break the beak, it won't uh, harm the servo as badly as it normally would. So what I did was I switched it to more of a familiar sort of scotchy oak mechanism. So on the servo, let me see if I can move it. So on the servo arm, there's actually a little knob attached to it up at the top right here. And that's uh, sort of just floating within this rectangle here. And basically when the servo rotates, then this rectangle is pushed. And then when it's pushed, then it moves the beaks open and closed. So um, right now I just have a potentiometer attached to it, attached to an Arduino that's moving the servo. So as you can see, it's pretty cool. You can really push it to the limits, like right there. And for going back, what I may do is move the servo horn um, back a bit further so that it, when it's at zero, then it will be able to pull it closed even more. Um, let's see. Right now, the servo isn't attached um, very permanently to the uh, frame of RoboBird. It's just attached using tape. So the servo does sort of wiggle around a bit. And also the servo itself is, its wire is sort of like cut right in the middle. So sometimes it doesn't work. <laughs> it's been funny to like play with this. Like, is it working? No, yes, no. See, yes, like, yeah, this is pretty funny. Anyway, um, so yeah, I got these laser cut um, by Kenzie Labs. So yeah, thank you. They rock. I also got some uh, other things laser cut, like the RoboBird mailing scroll, RoboBird. <laughs> it looks like a burrito, but it's a scroll. And it's cool because it's cut all the way through. So, as you can see there. So this means that it can like, you can see the light through it, which is really cool. Yeah, you can see the, some right there. I think next time I may make it so that it's not a line, but rather a bigger outline so that some of it will fall through and you'll get a bigger area of light through. Oh, about the going back to the scotch yoke mechanism, this is what the actual um, piece looks like. So basically these two right here connect to the beak just basically the same way using um, some wire looped around it. I may think of a better way, but right now it seems pretty good, and uh, everyone making this will have wire, hopefully, so, yeah. Oh, and another thing I've been experimenting with, um, so there were some RoboBirds that went bad because of a DPI conversion. And so this one here is actually not the right size for any servos, or it sort of does fit medium servos, but um, when you sand the edges, it makes it feel really smooth and it's pretty awesome. So I've been experimenting with that. Um, it's really cool just the way it feels. Let's see. I don't think the camera wants to focus on that. But anyway, um, so yeah, the grit that I've been using is um, 80 for like getting off the uh, charred uh, 
charred spots from the laser, the charred edges, and then 180 uh, for the like fine smoothing of it, like this edge piece. Uh, I also got another piece of art laser cut, so this is like a, just a little doodle, and uh, yeah, it's pretty funny. Ooh. And <laughs> I also got like a sign. So it says Robo Bird, so this is a D from it. I'll probably try and sand them, but it takes a while to get everything sanded. So this is what this sign. Robo Bird. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so now that this is sort of working, there is one edit that I have to make and it's that um, this uh, floaty saver piece or this piece right here um, I think this has to extend upwards approximately like 3.3 millimeters so same thing with this one and that will help it so that when also when it goes closed then it will like just make it stay up a bit and then that means that the beak will be evenly closed. However, that's just nitpicking. If it doesn't work out that way, then it's uh, it's not that big of a deal. No, I think one of the wires popped out. Oh. So that will be pretty cool to uh, test that. Um, right now, the, these pieces are attached with wood glue and it works very nicely. I really enjoy it because it's so sturdy. This is like the wing with the wood glue and it's like, you can't even break it. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much it to show right now. I'm, I'm really happy that finally um, I won't have to redesign the beak again because it's working really good right now. And uh, yeah, another thing will just have to be, I'll probably have to cut this out a bit more so that way the, uh, the threaded piece of wire doesn't uh, brush against it too much. Um, it's totally okay though for this part to be brushing because it seems to be working really fine and it seems to add some stability to it as well. <laughs> so that's pretty funny. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Wow, sorry. This is like dragging on, but this is so exciting. All right. So another thing is that the uh, beak, uh, like this part right here, will attach will be able to be attached to back here um, with a spring. So that way when the servo isn't on, then it will be able to spring back to closed um, position, hopefully. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm interested in seeing how well it will hold up. And uh, yeah, I, I like springs a lot, so. It'll be fun to play with that. Who knows if we'll actually make it in the end uh, kit though, but yeah. So right now, what I actually need more of is more servos. So since this one's, this one's wire is sort of temperamental, that brings me down to two sort of working servos. And one of them is like over here. So this one works, which is good, but it's glued in, so I have to unglue it out. Um, so yeah, I need more servos, and then I need some parts from McMaster, like I need these rivets, but in three quarter inch instead of one inch. And then I need, um, you know, those like servo extender thingies that were on the uh, rover that I showed uh, at Evil Mad Science, the uh, red phoenix one. That's how 
basically the wing servo works is that it uses the uh, the like little servo not little servo wires but they're like steel wires and then it pushes and pulls it I want to experiment with some that aren't as springy to see if it reduces any backlash on the uh, servo but one of the points of it being springy is that <laughs> and this is pretty funny because like all my robo birds got broken this way is that when the kids like go like that with the wing <laughs> then it won't break the servo or at least you know it will, it will uh, be a lot to break the servo unlike now how it's like you like sneeze on it and it breaks the servo <laughs> because the arm is just like so long that like <laughs> yeah um <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> as i'm looking at both of my robo birds that don't work boo um so yeah <laughs> maker fair was a lot of fun and um this is coming along well i just need parts from mcmaster servos then I need to redesign a smaller Arduino board to fit in there because these ones won't be able to fit in here. Oh, actually they do. Well, if you cut off part of it. But I want to make sure that there's uh, screw terminals on it for sure. I asked the other time in... Uh, ask an engineer how to make the uh, screw terminal stay on better like when you're like really like you know like torquing them around and stuff and someone suggested to use oval pads instead so I'll definitely try that and hopefully it will work because <laughs> I've had some screw terminals that are just like they like almost like rip up the board okay anyway this video is getting on to be really long oops <laughs> and uh, see what wires are messing up right now Let's see oh they really say bye to everyone <laughs> there we go. There we go. Bye. 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 <laughs> oh. oh, the servo horn detached from the servo. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> bye. <laughs> Thanks for watching this long video. Come to the Alibi party! <laughs>